Hello, today I want to talk about finance. As some of you know, I have not been working since May 2023. After my mom died, I decided to take a year off work to focus on my grief and just figure out how I wanted to live in a world without my mom. When I tell people that I'm not working, often they ask, how can you even afford that? And I really do believe it's because of the way that I've approached my financial journey the last 10 years. So today I want to share 13 finance tips that I've personally used that have really worked for me and helped me save as much money as I possibly can. I do want to share that Tips number one to five are only applicable if you do have access to a consistent income. So if that's not your story, just skip right to tip number six. Okay, tip number one, give when you can. Now, I know that might seem counterintuitive, like Kirsten, this is about saving money. Why are we giving money away? But I really do believe that what you put out into the world comes back to you eventually. This is something I saw my mom do a lot growing up. When we were having a good month and our family or friends needed money, she'd always be open to giving that money away. And then when we had tough months, those same family and friends always showed up and supported us financially. Right before I decided to stop working 2022 to 2023, was a time in my life where I was earning the most. I had a 60 to 70K salary. And if I'm being honest, I did not have to worry about money. So I decided to use a large portion of my income to support any family or friends that needed finances. I was very generous with how much I gave. And I know that some people might question that, like you finally got a job that pays you well, why are you not focusing all your attention on saving that money? But it really comes down to my values. I believe that wealth should be distributed fairly within society and this was my way of doing that. Fast forward to when my mom died, my friends pooled together $2,000 for that first month so that I wouldn't have to worry about finances and so that I had the option to take an entire month off work unpaid. If my friends hadn't done that, I don't think that I would have even thought about taking the entire year off work. So while my friends giving me that money really impacted me that first month after my mom died, I would say it set the foundation for my entire year. Number two is save when you can. So this does not mean save a lot of money. There have been times in my life when I could only save $25 a month, but it was still something. And over 10 years, even through very low paying jobs, I was able to save $10,000. So much of saving is not about working hard but it's about working smart so for example i am part of two banks tangerine and eq and i would say they both tremendously help in my saving journey tangerine has all these money rules that they can attach to your account where you end up saving money without having to think about saving money and eq has very high interest savings accounts so the money you keep there accumulates more interest than it would if it was in another bank. If I hadn't been as committed to saving over the last 10 years, I wouldn't have the $10,000 that I had when my mom died, which is how I was able to take this entire year off. Tip number three, if you have the means to, I would definitely recommend hiring a financial planner I have an excellent one, her name is Kat. I will share her contact info in the description below. Kat has really helped me work through a lot of my financial trauma 
so that I am now at a place where I make financial decisions that are not based on fear. Tip number four is using your employee benefits. When I finally got a job that had employee benefits, I was really stressed about using them because it was very overwhelming to figure out how to use them in an effective way where you're spending the least amount of money. But once I worked through that, I realized that I now had access to services that I never would have had access to before. There would be times when my body was in so much pain that I wouldn't be able to take transit, so I would have to take an Uber, or I did not have the physical capacity to cook, so I would have to order in. Injuring myself and being able to see a physiotherapist so that I heal quicker, that matters. Employee benefits have saved me thousands of dollars every year. So if you have any, I definitely recommend putting in the work to research exactly what you have access to and how you can use it in the most effective way possible. Tip number five is setting up automatic bill payments. So this could be for your phone, for your internet, for your credit card. In the long run, it really does make a difference because it reduces the risk of late fees, which can add up over the years. Tip number six is taking advantage of the opportunity to collect points for groceries or credit card bills. Whenever I purchase groceries, I collect points and I wait till the next month and redeem them for my next grocery bill. And this allows me to buy snacks as part of my groceries, which I wouldn't have the budget for otherwise. With my credit card bills, before I used to redeem my points for flights, but right now I don't really have the money for a vacation. And even if I did, I will not have the time because I'm about to have a baby. So instead I'm redeeming my credit card points as gift cards for restaurants. So even though I don't really have the budget to spend money eating out, I still have access to that because of the gift cards. Speaking of gift cards, I have become a lot more thoughtful about using gift cards that I receive from family or friends. Before, I would just keep the gift cards in my wallet and use them if I happen to remember them. But now I have very specific intentions for the gift cards that I receive. So when creating my budget, I realized that I don't really have spare money to buy gifts for other people. And that was something that I was really bummed about. So now when I get a gift card from a family or friend, I save that gift card and I use it when I want to buy a gift for someone. And it brings me so much joy that I still have access to that, even though I don't really have the budget for it. Tip number eight is using what you have. I think a lot of immigrants grow up with this mentality of saving things for a rainy day and I am included in that. But this year I've started using up everything that I have. So I get a lot of skincare as gifts and before I would want to save it for a special occasion. But now I just use it up as soon as I get it. This reduces the chance of the skincare going to waste because I might have waited too long and now it's expired and I can't use it. But it also makes me feel like I'm living in abundance even when I have a tight budget. I can't go for a spa day, that's fine. I can create a spa day at home. And what surprised me is how much money using the skincare that I get as gifts has saved me. I have spent so much less this year on soaps and lotions and face masks. Tip number nine is incorporating a three-step system when you want to buy something. So whenever I want to buy something, step one is waiting before I buy it. This could be waiting one week, three weeks, or three months, depending on when I need that item. 
Waiting just gives me time to reflect on whether I really do need this item so that I'm being more intentional about the things that I'm buying. If I do decide I need that item, step number two is asking family or friends if they have that item and I can borrow it or if I can buy it somewhere secondhand. And if this is impossible, then step three is buying the item firsthand. I have found that incorporating this system into my finances reduces exponentially how many things I buy. It also makes space for me to be really creative about another item I can use instead. For example, I have found that it is much cheaper to just buy coconut oil in bulk and use that for cooking but also for my hair. But it has been really hard to apply the coconut oil into my scalp in a seamless way. So my current method is putting coconut oil in a shot glass that I don't use anymore and heating that up. It's just the perfect size for how much coconut oil I need. And then I use a dropper from one of my old skin products that finished to pick the oil and put it into my hair. Tip number 10 is reconsidering the monthly subscriptions that you pay for. So when I had a really good paying job and I was not worried about money, I would subscribe to Netflix Amazon Prime and Disney Plus all at the same time. I just love the idea of having access to all three and sharing the password with all my family and friends who didn't have as much money to pay for them. But this year, I'm being really cautious about the things that I subscribe to. I think about how much this subscription is really bringing to my life and also how often I use the subscription. I am currently only subscribed to Costco and to Spotify. I use Costco every month and it saves me a ton on groceries so I feel like the $6 a month is worth it. And Spotify, I use that every single day and listening to music without having to listen to ads brings me so much joy. I also share Spotify with two other people and that drastically brings down the cost that each of us are spending on it. Tip number 11 is taking advantage of free community resources that you might have access to. So for example, museums often have a free day or a free evening and this is one way that my partner and I can spend our date night without spending any money. I also recently found that I needed to do exercises to help reduce pain during my pregnancy but the fitness classes that I was recommended were very expensive. So an alternative that I found is a free swimming pool drop-in class that I can attend that's just five minutes away. Tip number 12 is creating a budget that works for you. Now I say for you specifically because I believe everybody has different needs and different wants and I don't think we need to be following the same universal budget or feel guilty about wanting to spend money in areas that other people don't spend money in. So instead, create a budget that reflects your priorities, your needs, your wants. It took me about six months to come up with a budget that actually represents me and also one that I do stick to. And even after that, every three to four months, I revisit my budget to check if it still reflects what my priorities are. And if not, I tweak it to match the way that I've changed. Just in case this is helpful, I wanted to share the budget I've been following this year as a reference. This is a budget I started in May 2023 when I decided to take the year off but it's been working great for me, so I'm gonna be continuing to follow it until December, 2024. Adding up the 2,000 that my friends gave me and the 10,000 I had saved, I had 12,000 in May, 2023. So I allocated a budget of 1,000 for every month in order to take 12 months off from May, 2023 to May, 2024. 
Just a note that since my partner and I live together and share most bills, we decided that he would pay for our rent and I would pay for our daily expenses. So any household expenses you see are for two people. The $1,000 a month was split into $130 for utilities, which includes electricity, gas, water, and internet, $20 for tenant insurance, $275 for groceries, out of which $200 is for food, and $75 is for toiletries, cleaning supplies, and general household maintenance. $18 is for monthly subscription, and $40 is for eating out, which I know is incredibly low. My partner and I are usually only able to go out once or twice a month to keep within the $40. Thank God for the hole in the wall immigrant spots. And that's all for my household bills. Next up are my personal bills. I spend $100 on my phone bill, $25 on transit or an Uber if I need to go out, $100 on any medical appointments, medicine or hygiene. And if I don't have a lot of health bills in a month, I definitely use this category to buy bubble teas for my mental health, of course. Even though I'm not working, saving is still a priority for me because I know how helpful money can be in unexpected situations or even just to invest in my future self. So on top of my monthly bills, I also save $50 every month for a house in the future in case I ever decide to switch from renting to buying. I also save $40 to pay my life insurance so that if I die, my closest family and friends are taken care of. I save $50 for any dreams I have in the future that I want to make a reality. I save $100 for the baby that is about to pop out of me. And finally, $50 for an emergency fund. All these numbers have been rounded up to leave space for a wiggle room and I find that I rarely ever go over my monthly budget, so I know it's sustainable for me. My final tip, tip number 13, is always reflecting on ways that you can reduce your budget expenses. So often when I feel like I'm spending more money than I want to, I return to my budget and I go through every category and I see if any of them are flexible. So recently I found that our new house has a much higher electricity bill than we're used to paying. And that was really impacting our overall monthly budget. So I did some research on ways that we can save electricity and we came up with two strategies. So for where we live, we can choose to pay our electricity bill based on on-peak and off-peak hours. During off-peak hours, like 7 p.m. to 7 a.m., electricity charges are much lower. So now I make sure to cook my meals after 7 p.m. and incorporate this into my meal prep for the entire week. The second strategy that we implemented is unplugging our lights and appliances. So even if your lights and appliances are off, if they're plugged in, they can generate a small amount of electricity, often called ghost electricity, and this can add to your electricity bill. So when we don't need a light or appliance, we immediately unplug it. And although this does take a little bit of work, we've noticed that it has drastically changed our electricity bill. After implementing both these strategies for just one month, we noticed a $10 difference in our electricity bill. And I have faith that if we continue to use these strategies and get better at them, that that number is gonna reduce even further. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that some of these tips resonated with you. If they did, let me know in the comments below. And if you have your own tips that you wanna share, please do share. 
I believe financial knowledge should be shared, especially because everybody doesn't have equal access to them. This video is actually the first of a three-part series about finances, so keep an eye out if you're ready to watch the other two.